For more than 20 years, an armed conflict between the rebel group the Lord Resistance Army and the Uganda government, which led to various human rights abuses and atrocities committed by the LRA, affected northern Uganda. Approximately 1.8 million people were displaced into internally displaced people's camps within Acholi, Lango and Teso sub-regions. The return of peace and normalcy facilitated the spontaneous return of the IDP to their villages of origin and by the end of 2010, more than 93% had returned. As a majority of returnees rebuilt their lives, a small portion of extremely vulnerable individuals failed to return to their villages of origin due to extreme poverty characterized by physical disabilities and limitation. Help edge beneficiaries who have returned to their villages of origin are still struggling to achieve durable solutions. 89-year-old Ochaya Paul has to struggle every day to provide a single meal, usually cassava and vegetables, to his family. Ochaya Paul has had to work hard every day to earn some money to buy soap, salt and food. His wife, who has had her broken hand, not treated due to lack of transport to a hospital and medical attention, sits at home unable to do any housework because of her disability. a dong nekolina a 78 year old grandmother of four is another of the elderly persons who has been abandoned by her family members and has had to struggle to provide for her grandchildren and herself the children are orphans and don't go to school due to the lack of basic scholastic materials like uniforms, books and pens, despite the free universal primary education program for Uganda. <laughs> Kadokela, <laughs> 
Nicolina uses her grandchildren to dig other people's gardens whilst she assists with simple weeding to get food and money to buy basic household items like salt, soap and paraffin. This source of livelihood is very unreliable and unsustainable, more especially during the dry period when there is less agricultural activity. When you come back to the national level, and our constitution, 1995, uh, Article 32 talks about affirmative action addressing the imbalances created either by history, age, disability, or gender. And the older persons are part of those who are affected by age. In the previous uh, arrangement of government, there was no specific address to this affirmative action. It is under this context that the ministry in charge of older persons and the department was created in 1998. The idea here is that when we are locating resources or planning any uh, government programs or civil society programs, we must ensure that specific attention is given to these uh, vulnerable groups, especially the older persons. When we talk about other persons and we talk about HIV and AIDS, there is a general perception that other persons are not affected, but these are caregivers, caretakers of the victims of AIDS. You note that our traditional institutions have broken out because of this urbanization. These older persons are left on their own and they are caring for orphans. They are caring for the victim, uh, uh, AIDS victims. And yet attention is not given to them. I think this is a problem we need to look at. <laughs> The older persons mainly talked of ill health as a key concern. By the way, this is quite different from other vulnerable groups. When we interview uh, youth, when we interview uh, orphans and other vulnerable children, they usually come up with poverty as the first key concern, but surprisingly, the older persons came up with ill health. And so it is a very, very, it is also highlighted as an area of focus. 
I would like to use this opportunity as the country coordinator of Help Age International to call upon government to expand social protection to northern Uganda. And here our interest in the current social protection program is the cash transfer for the older persons, the older persons grant. We will be very happy if we see the extremely vulnerable individuals in northern Uganda benefiting from this grant. My appeal is to ensure that there is integration of all categories of people. When you talk about orphans, you shouldn't isolate them from the older persons. When you talk about uh, the vulnerables, we want to ensure that the person with disability are catered for. And you know, when you're addressing programs for disability, there is no way you can avoid the older person because part of the cause of disability is adverse in age. You note know that people have lost the sight, people have, uh, are physically crippled because of old age. So whatever program that we want to look at, I would basically call upon those development partners, you said, the FID, UN agencies that are operating in Uganda, northern Uganda, and all government programs to ensure that the component for the aging population is properly catered for. By the end of 2010, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees had registered more than 10,000 extremely vulnerable individuals in northern Uganda. Ochaya Paul, among many others, struggles tirelessly on a daily basis to meet their most basic needs and that of orphans and vulnerable children in their care. Help Age International feels that Ochaya Paul deserves to live and age in dignity on a monthly old age grant provided by the government of Uganda is a key solution to achieving this human right.